to butt the track. These dogs won't go to him. Those dogs are trailing down through there. We hit a lion track back up in this saddle. It's summertime now, so we have to be really on the real short end of the track. Conditions are good. We've had a lot of rain, but the rain was, you know, a week ago, so the soil is real fresh. You know, they're doing pretty good. You know, there's a lot of ways to hunt lions. There's ways like I'm doing right now. You go out on foot, throw your backpack on, ride or you know, walk through some good country, hit uh, some saddles, hit some some ridge lines, some big drainages, wherever you think a lion might travel, and 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 hope you can find a track. A lot of guys do that. A lot of guys hunt lions, uh, you know, out of a vehicle, even in the dirt. We call, you know, we differentiate between dry ground, which is dirt lion hunting. And then uh, snow lion hunting, which is, which is when there's a fresh snow or there is a snow and you can drive roads until you find, cut a track. And then the advantages to that is you know exactly what you're trailing, you know which direction the lion's going, and you can, those guys get pretty good at aging tracks to tell how old, you know, if it's an older track, a lot of those areas where they hunt in the snow, they have roads, so they can say, well, they, we'll cut across, there's a road, goes back through there, and see if that line came out of this drainage. I've never done that. I take that back. I have drove roads before in the snow and looked for a track. I've never been successful at it. And then walking like this is something I do in the summertime. I can go out and uh, I get exercise, and then I get the dogs out, and then we'll, we still try to hit some decent country where there's, you know, possibly a lion walks through like today. This is, you know, I know there's a female lion that goes all over this country right here. But you don't have much time. You only have, you know, a couple hours. So when a lion hunter talks about getting on the short end of the track, what he's talking about is you're not too far behind that lion. In other words, you know, that lion walked through just an hour or two hours ago, or maybe even shorter than that. It's probably about the only way you're going to get one caught this time of year. Because you trail, if you, you know, if you're too far behind and you trail up until, shoot, in this country, you trail till 10 o'clock. You're done. I mean, it's getting uh, up above 80 degrees. When it starts getting past 75, 80 degrees, you might as well go home and drink tea. But... The most successful way to hunt lions is in the snow. And those guys catch a lot of lions, and, and I don't have anything against that. It's just not the style I like. And I mean, if I was a paying customer and my only objective was to kill a lion, that's what I'd do. I'd go find me a good snow hunter in some of that good northern country, you know, Nevada, Utah, Colorado. Maybe they're going to find that lion in that rock pile right there. Anyway, up in there and go up there, you know, get ready to set in a vehicle. Well, and then even those guys, even to increase their odds, they have runners that, that, that run roads. And uh, they pay them to, you know, or tip them or whatever to run roads and find a track. And they got radios or nowadays telephones, you know, that work just about everywhere and say, hey, you know, I'm over here on section line, blah, blah, blah. And we cut a fresh tom track and you drive over there, you know, it might sometimes it's even, you know, several hours away and they'll they'll go get their dogs on that track. And then what they do is their dogs are riding around the box. They get their dogs out and they put them on the track and then they run them. That's okay. I mean, I don't have anything against it. That's great. You know, and a, for a guy who's going to pay five, six, seven thousand dollars to kill a lion, I'm sure that's the way to go. And then there's other, there's, there's dry ground lion hunters that are in good areas and dry ground, like I said, means that there's no snow, but there's different degrees of that also. You know, sometimes you'd like down here in this old desert, this is tough country. I mean, it, it, first place, the, the ground doesn't hold a track. Uh, sometimes the scenting conditions can be really tough. I don't think, I mean, we got pretty good conditions right now.
it's really not that bad. But, uh, and then you get into some higher elevations where there's more foliage, 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 I can't hardly say that word, where there's grass and there's brush, and that, those areas hold scent a lot longer. And that's, you know, ideally that's kind of where you want to go, or I think. And, and then, so there's guys who hunt that, and then there, there's guys who hunt that kind of country, and then they have used to until they outlawed them. That line's in that rock pile over there. <laughs> used to until they outlawed them, these guys had these cameras. They started putting out these cameras, and back a long time ago, I had a couple cameras out myself. They weren't the cell phone cameras, they were the, the Buckeye cameras, and I, I lived up in the mountains, and I had a, a a base station or a deal hooked up to my computer where one of these cameras got a picture they would send it radio wave to my base station which was hooked up to my computer now it was before the cell phone cameras came out and let me tell you what now that's pretty handy deal you can you know you know exactly when the lion walked through you know which way he was going and uh, you know if it's a tom or a female most of the time you can tell Uh, that's Timmy. Anyway, so, but the way that fascinates me to hunt lions, and I, it's, it's, it's more a style than it is dry ground snow. Cause I'll, it's, I, you know, heck, there was snow that come. I use it, you know. But we the, usually when we get snows in this country, it hurts more than it helps. Cause there's a lot of things that go into it. I mean, cause the minute that snow hits, it doesn't take long and it's melting out. Well, you have a track go through there, it melts out that track. But anyway, the style that I like is, oh, I didn't cover all the different ways to hunt lions. Dry ground. So the cameras where they send the cell phone, where they send the picture to your phone, you know, and a guy, if he's guiding hunters and he gets, you know, five, $6,000 a lion and he can bump a, lot, a hunter out in three or four days instead of taking 10 days, you're probably money ahead to buy those cameras, but I think they're illegal just about everywhere now. Another way you can do it is you can have these little uh, cheap cameras and you can put these little cheap cameras everywhere and then hire a guy to go run those cameras, you know, and that, that's, you know, I think that's legal. They might be making uh, any kind of game camera illegal in Arizona is what I heard. You know, I think it's like anything else. You get money involved in it and, and people figure out a way to cheat it, especially with the technology we have now. They're gonna catch that lion if they can hurry. I got, I'm gonna have to hurry here in a minute, get caught up to him. Another way is dragging roads. You know, and I've done that before, dragging arroyos, dragging roads, you know, you've got some good crossing points where a lion will walk through or you know is a, is a, is a crossing point and you drag those areas out and then you, go back and check those areas regularly see if you know see if you can find that track it's dragged out the ground's kind of fluffed up and soft and when that lion crosses through there you got a track i've done that <laughs> that's uno he's got a heck of a voice anyway the way i like to hunt is is an old man henry mcintyre told me years ago i asked him henry how do you hunt lions and and I've always wanted to hunt lions since the early 80s, and I did a little bit back then. I don't talk about it because I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, not that I know a lot about what I'm doing now, but I know more. He told me, I said, I said Mr. McIntyre, I said, how do you hunt lions? He said, I take good dogs into good lion country, and I make circles. And I ride circles on my mule. And to me, that fascinated me. I got two out of the three, really. I go into, well, I got, I think, decent trail dogs, and uh, I make circles. Now, good lion country, that's still, this pretty debatable. This is pretty tough country, but I enjoy it. And uh, I enjoy watching the dogs progress and learn how to trail. And it, that's one of the reasons I make the videos is to document the progress To document the progress I make, and then also uh, the dogs make, and we and, and 
you know, when I was up in the mountains, up at my camp, you know, it was a little bit easier. We caught some lions and, and, uh, and I've caught lions down in this desert, but it's been hard. And uh, a friend of mine, or I have heard some of the old time lion hunters, you talk about what it takes, you know, dogs, you know, anything, you know, whatever it takes to, to catch lions. And, and they say persistence has caught more lions than anything else. So being persistent. And when I talk about persistence, I'm talking about hunting day after day after day after day. The good dry ground lion hunters you talk about, they hunt six days a week. And uh, they forego a lot of other things to be able to go lion hunt. And, uh, you know, how do you make a living at it? If you're not guiding hunters, or you don't have some kind of retirement, or if you've retired, you might not have the energy to do this. But uh, yeah, you got to give up a lot. You know, most of them live like a church mouse, so they can so they can pursue their passion, you know, every day and be successful at it. Because you keep going and keep going and keep going. Eventually, you're going to get if you got dogs that are trailing, like these hounds right now are trailing. Eventually, you're going to hit that that short end of that track. If you hit an older track, as a good friend of mine, Mike Root, told me, he said, well, you know where to start the next day. And asked Mike Root the same thing. said, how do you catch these lions out here? Mike, he said, you just got to keep going. You got to keep going. And that's one of the most difficult things that I've found over the years is, find, is having the time to hunt consecutive days, to keep on going, to keep on going more than four days in a row. But that's that's lion hunting i like to and, and if i don't even get out in good country if i don't even know if there's a lion there if i get my dogs out on the ground and i am on a mule or even walking this time of year because i don't have much time i'm pretty happy i i, I just like to be as, as jr williams good friend of mine god rest his soul he used to say just to be out in nature i just love to be out in nature i just like to be out and you know, typically I don't go with anybody. I kind of like to do things on my own. That way I can go where I want and I don't feel obligated to ask somebody, you know, you want to go that way or you want to go that way? Or if you, you know, what do you think? I make up my own mind, do my own thing. And I share it with you guys. So I try to, and I hope I've had some criticisms and things like that. You know, of course I put myself out there, but, uh, I've talked to lots of lion hunters and I've done a lot of, th you know, over the years and, and I'm almost 60 and I've been to that, I've been doing this for quite a while now. I have friends of mine that have been doing it and, and, and uh, have been quite successful at it. Anyway, I better get to those dogs. Jeff, onward and upward, that's the watchword. Too hot, too steep, we're too soft. It's just impossible in this country. They get, I keep getting a bark here and there, but shoot, these dogs are hot. I mean, look at this boulder pile, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. <laughs> 